Let's talk about that with our leadoff market panel. Veritas Financial Managing Partner and CBC contributor Greg Branch on set. And Stonex Chief Market Strategist Catherine Rooney Vera. Thank you to you both. Uh, Greg, you're here, so I'll start with you. Sure. And uh, we know you've been cautious on the market. Man, this is a this is a red, it's a red hot market. And the one thing I've learned in doing this a long time, momentum can last a lot longer than people think. Right. It, it can depart from fundamentals. And I think that has it? I think so. I think so. You know what? I'm going to answer that both ways. In some cases it has, in some cases it hasn't. And I think that there's a set of stocks that's going to grow 20% plus this year. And we're seeing that the market activity narrow around those stocks. Is this Greg Branch getting bullish? No. What's <laughs> happening here? Is Abs- Valentine's Ab- Day? Is- Love is in the air, Greg. Absolutely not. I, <laughs> I still have my bearish posture overall. But but this has long been a component of my thesis, is that the the rally would narrow again around these set of stocks. And while we focus on the mega cap names in terms of that set, there are names down the chain as well. We saw ServiceNow put up mm-hmm. spectacular results, Palantir, Powell Industries. And so what I think will happen is that we'll see some of those names start to get the same type of performance as the larger cap ones. But again, if you have a set of stocks or a set of companies that are going to put up 20% plus, mm-hmm. and you have the rest that are going to put up low single digits or negative growth, because I do believe the slowdown's in front of us, I think you'll see investors flock where, where the honey is. Well, there's certainly been enough layoffs to sort of fall into your slowdown thesis, though, Catherine. You know what scared me about yesterday was that market took a big hit, and some of these high flyers, they took the biggest hit, as they should, and they took the hit because inflation data came in mildly higher than what the consensus of Wall Street expected, so it shifted Fed thought. And I just thought, this is a market that I, I think is riding the razor's edge of every little twist and turn in what the Fed might do based on the price of eggs. <laughs> That's a good point, Brian. And, and, uh, and I'll add to it, which is I, I think that the way the S&P 500, principally driven by those magnificent whatever, six, seven, eight, you know, whatever it is, the only way that can move higher in a breakout 20 percent higher is if economic growth remains strong and this disinflationary trend continues. So if we see 2024 be a repeat of 2023, yes, the S&P 500 driven by the high flyers is going to move higher by 20 percent. But the likelihood of that, I think, is low. We're going to see a rocky period on for inflation. And Brian, I'll add, I think that there's a, a elevated risk that we see inflation Inflation reaccelerate down the line if we are to continue at this torrid economic growth pace, which is almost double potential. Remember, potential growth in the U.S. is 1.8 percent. We will have ended last year with real growth to the tune of almost 3 percent. And that looks to be carrying over into 2020. But Catherine, and didn't this, this rally started really like, you know, with the exception of some stocks, the broader rally started sort of last October because that's when the Fed started to shift and you started talking about rate cuts or the pause or all this other stuff. If inflation does stay the same or even reaccelerate, which is what happened in 1980, I believe, then if the Fed changes, if we start talking about no rate cuts this year, do we have to give back the rally? Because if the rally was based on that and that doesn't happen, then... Mm. Well, it depends on the magnitude of the reacceleration, because remember, in the beginning of 2023, Brian, the markets were expecting 75 basis points of rate cuts. It didn't happen, as we know, but it didn't happen because economic growth was so robust and, and, and we had the disinflationary trend. Were that to continue, we can see a repeat. So, yes, we can see a breakout. But I just think that the risk is higher that that doesn't transpire because we have other headwinds here, namely corporate profit margins are going to come under pressure. And if that happens, then we see cost cutting. If that happens, we see layoffs. So I think that there are a lot of headwinds to the market, which is why I like buying cheap put options, which is why I like taking some chips off the off the table, rotating into those more defensive sectors in this barbell approach to the equity markets. Yeah, put options, a little bit of insurance there. I mean, listen, here's the thing. There's a company called Supermicro. I'm not going to ask you to go into individual names. Right. Went up $90 today. <laughs> it's up $20 after hours. It was a sm- tiny cap stock. It got caught up in the AI frenzy. Traders are printing money on it. I, I just feel like if we just change the name, Max, we're going to change the name of the show to Last Call AI, and our ratings will triple instantly. We'll change nothing. We'll just add AI to the right. end of Last Call right. AI. 
and, and we're that's, right. that's it. Look, we're all going to retire that, with that's bags part, of gold. That, that's part of it, Brian. But what I what I think it really gets down to, though, is, is some of this is fundamentally driven, right? And so when you look at the names that I mentioned, they doubled their backlog, they crushed their earnings, uh, and so investors are looking for that within the context of everything being driven by M-TUM, is what you called it. or Yeah, the, that, the Momentum <laughs> ETF. Right. We it's might a, need some Tums on the M-TUM. We, we likely will. <laughs> um, I, I have been eating Tums for two months because, as you know, I have been saying that it is more likely we get a Fed hike than a Fed cut first. And so I am, I am comforted that my good friend Catherine is starting to warm up to that idea. I think that's what you're saying, right, Catherine? Well, I think that we're probably going to get cuts, but I, I don't think we'll get hikes, uh, Greg, but, but unlikely to be the 150, 175 that the markets had yeah. originally priced in. I think we get I'll 75 to 100 this year. 